November 13th, 2017, the first shovel of dirt was removed from a 64-acre plot of land just west of the Las Vegas Strip. The Raiders, united with a team of tireless leaders from Nevada, are creating an ultra-modern, permanent stadium for the Raider Nation to call home. These are the stories of the people and the project, told from the ground up. Anytime you build a new home, there are many things to consider. For the Raiders, an undertaking as complex as a cutting edge stadium will utilize much of the organization's talent and focus. It's been pretty much my job for the last 10 to 12 years. So to see it coming to fruition is very satisfying. The whole experience of finding a new home and developing a new state-of-the-art stadium for the Raiders is an overnight success that took about 20 years. We are interrupting your programming for an extraordinary moment here yes. in Las Vegas. So we are uh, waiting and expecting to learn that the Raiders uh, are coming to Las Vegas. It's pretty exciting, but it's, it's coming at us very fast. It happens like some other things in life in two ways very, very gradually and then suddenly. I can't believe this is happening, but holy cow, I better get everything organized because the pace is gonna be furious, and it has been since we started. NFL stadiums take a lot of land, and finding just the right parcel is the key to a successful endeavor. We struggled with that in, in previous incarnations in trying to get stadiums done, and, and unless you have control of the land, you really don't have much of a project. Owning the property legitimizes the project, Meaning, if you don't have the land, all you really have are, well, some pretty architectural renderings. There were, I believe, 11 different sites that were contemplated. Sites up and down the strip. We talked about some sites as far away as the Speedway, some sites down south of 15. I think it's by far the best location we could have found. It's essentially adjacent to the strip, so you'll have all that strip traffic, but it's not on the strip, thus creating problems not just for the stadium patrons, but for also the resort properties. You don't want to create a nightmare for them that impacts the rest of their business. We're building a spectacular facility together. We are. You are. And the entire game day experience needs to reflect that. So even though you'll hear about our plan today, that plan will, will continue to evolve over time. This particular stadium site, as you know, was selected intentionally to take advantage of the urban environment. You have a couple different kind of philosophies. One is to develop the suburban model, where it's out in the middle of nowhere, easy to drive to, a sea of asphalt around it, but nothing else really going in its favor. Locating large sporting venues inside an urban setting has been a recent trend for a lot of reasons. However, with the upsides, there come some distinct challenges. You have all the attributes of the urban network, roads, infrastructure, proximity to hotels, entertainment venues. The downside is developing something in an urban context is more challenging. You're more constrained in terms of what you can do, in terms of how much space you can do it in. When you carve out 14 or 20 acres for the footprint of the building and its immediate landscaping, that doesn't leave much space. There's a whole lot to pack onto this site. If it was, you know, 122 acres, we'd find a way to fill it up and say that we need more space. With the right location secured, the Raiders now need an architect with vision. Coming off an unsuccessful bid to build a new stadium in Los Angeles, David Manica is retained for this new opportunity by owner Mark Davis, known as MD. Even though at first, they didn't necessarily see eye to eye. MD hated the design that I'd done for the Chargers, absolutely hated it. So the day I met him, uh, he was not real fond of me and really not fond of the design at all. And he said basically, this is terrible, you know, start over again. It was really clear to me that MD wanted a modern building, so we were never gonna do brick arches and a sort of historic Indianapolis type building. He wanted it to be about the future. He wants it to be more than just a building. He wants it to be something that the community's proud of, that the Raiders are proud of, our entire fan base, our alumni, our staff, our coaches, our players, everyone that's, that's touched the Raiders over the years. He wants them to look at that building and know that they had a part in building it and that it's a beautiful facility. 
MD has an incredible vision and incredible intuition. So we worked with him really closely and listened to him and just kept going over and over and over and over again until he said, don't touch it, now it's done. I wanted it to look like a black sports car, to find those sort of fluid, aerodynamic, seamless kinds of design inspirations from automobile industry and apply it to, to what we're doing in Vegas for the Raiders. I need you and David to work with me to educate him on the cost of this element, because if we can't deliver that, um, we shouldn't be rendering it at this point. So we need to have that conversation with him because I think his expectations are at the $20 million level and we can't even deliver at the $8 million level. I think we may have a, a way to make this, the silver look a lot nicer than what it looked like in that mock-up. For our firm to, to land one of the biggest NFL stadiums ever built in the country, it's an incredible joy and a blessing to work on buildings that make a difference to cities. As a part of the Raiders Manica design, there are four key elements that are so important to the organization they've taken on almost mythical proportions. I say there's no stupid questions. But there are four questions that I don't ever want to hear anybody ask. Can we get rid of the real grass? No. Can we get rid of the clear ETFE roof? No. Can we get rid of the curtain wall on the outside of the building? It's very expensive to have all the swoops and, and the dark glass and all that. The answer is no. The open peristyle with the lanai doors that open and close with the view to the north across to the strip. Can we remove that? Because that's a big moving object and that's very expensive. The answer is no. When we moved to Vegas, growing grass in the desert is challenging. But he said, absolutely no way can we have artificial turf. We must have real grass. That's the way football's meant to be played. The question was, should we have a retractable roof stadium? And I said, I believe that would be a mistake. And here's why. It's very, very expensive to build a retractable roof stadium. And the truth is that you rarely use it. Because in a retractable roof stadium, there are always people in one half of the building that are in the sun and the other half that are in the shade. And the people in the sun see the people in the shade and complain. So it might as well be closed all the time if you can solve the grass issue. So we decided to do a fixed dome stadium in Las Vegas with an ETFE roof. The whole field tray slides out from underneath the stadium and grows in the uh, hot desert sun. We created what we called Peristyle End. That was a link to their days in LA at the Coliseum and the old Olympic torch and the, and the, uh, the Peristyle End of that facility. So it was important for him to keep that. With land in hand and a beautiful design on paper, it's time to start construction. The Raiders look to Mortensen and their decades of experience building sports facilities. And as the old adage goes, timing is everything. We had just started building U.S. Bank Stadium for the Vikings in Minneapolis. We had just started construction on the new arena for the Golden State Warriors in San Francisco. We had other projects and we had our hands full. They were very direct with us and they said that the timing of this is not perfect for us because we're trying to finish up that project and that's so important to us. And that really resonated, that they were willing to be honest about the fact that we might have to pass on this project because the completion of, of the one we're working on is so important to us. We've never allowed ourselves to get overextended. These projects take our best. And if our best are not available, then we don't pursue the project. If you missed that, he's referring to 2015 when Mortensen declined to bid on the Carson City Stadium project. When everything was delayed essentially a year and the Los Angeles project went to, to Inglewood, we knew that Mortensen would be available and we jumped on it. We really liked and favored Mortensen from the onset because we observed them put together the Minnesota building, similar timeline project around 31 months, and they completed that project with what we call zero punch list. It means they opened the building with no work that needed to be done. In order to leverage their talent, gain an expert in the local market, and spread the risk management on such a large construction project, Mortensen forms a joint venture with McCarthy, calling on their 150 years of experience. We've been in Vegas for over 40 years, so that kind of long-standing local history is what really led Mortensen to, to team up with McCarthy. McCarthy's been a 
a good friend and partner for many, many years. You blend the two together and you have a fantastic uh, combination for a construction team for this project. With the team assembled, the plan gains momentum. To facilitate such a fast timeline, the project will be what's known as a design build. This stadium is one of the largest and fastest design build sports projects ever undertaken in the country. Design build is a nice way of saying we're gonna try to do five years worth of work in 31 months. There's a design architect who's come up with the concept and the image, the character of the, the building. And then our role is the formal final architect of record is to take all that and convert it into construction documents. So we are the ones who actually take kind of final responsibility for it. And then overseeing the construction as the building comes to life. They build, they lay concrete. We designed that maybe three or four months ago. Well, now we're designing the next level up where the electrical goes and everything as they're preparing to already pour that concrete. So we as designers are barely ahead of the project. So if we delay, it might cause delay for them. Design bill has not been used extensively in the design and construction of sports facilities. So this is relatively unusual. This is a, a massive size project to be design build, right? There's a lot of moving parts and a whole lot of design that needs to be figured out. The question often gets to ask, you know, what keeps you awake at night? And it, it's absolutely the schedule. The schedule just doesn't afford a lot of time to think about key decisions. We've needed a design team that has been willing to sort of throw out some of the old rules about how design documents get put together, in what order they get put together, because this is really about feeding that machine. A new home and a new destination for Raider Nation. Now it's time. For now, the Raiders must actually build a building. Stay with us as we take you on an unprecedented look into the techniques and technologies, the steel and the stress, oh my God. Oh. as well as the lives of the men and women responsible for building an ultra-modern stadium from the ground up. <laughs> 